Hi everyone, I am back after taking the month of June off and I am here to show you my tutorial for these easy watercolor seashells. This is kind of a loose but detailed tutorial I think you'll really like. So we're going to start with some high quality watercolor paper. I'm using Arsh 140 pound cold press. I'm also using my handmade letter sparrow paints. These are amazing. I also like to use my butcher tray to mix these paints together and I am using my Polina Bright round brush size zero. I painted these shells for my June watercolor wreath on Instagram and everyone said they would love a full and detailed tutorial. So this is a little bit of a long one, but I really wanted to show the entire process. So you can skip through some of the parts that are repetitive, but I'm going to go through each process of painting these shells. The first step in painting these shells is to create a very light wash for our first layer. This is why I like to use my butcher tray that has watercolor from previous projects on it so that I'm not picking up any new pigment to increase the saturation, but I'm just adding water to the pigment that's already there, so we're getting a very light pale wash. So all I've done so far in this first step is created the shape of the shell in that light wash. While it's still wet, I'm going to create a highlight by cleaning my brush, wiping some of the paint off, drying my brush, and repeating. And then while it's, again, still wet, I'm going in with that same pigment that I started with, a little bit more saturated, and adding just a little bit around the edges for it to blend in to create some contrast. So now we have the shape of our shell in a light wash, we have a highlighted area, and now we have some contrasting harder areas in more saturated colors. And then we're going to be moving on to our next shell. So we're going to continue this process for each of the shells creating the shape in a light wash, taking some out for a highlight, and then adding in some contrasting colors. And we're not always going to be using the same color of pigment. We can add in purples and reds and tans. Try to stay within the same color palette. I'm using the shells that I have on my table as a guide, so I'm not going very far out of that. I'm not adding in bright greens or oranges or deep reds. I'm really sticking to those neutral, cool tones. You'll see every now and then I do reach for my main palette above where I'm working to grab some more pigment because I just don't quite have enough paint on my butcher tray to sustain the entire project. Just make sure that it's watered down enough to create this really light layer. We need to keep in mind when we're working with watercolor the entirety of the project. So because watercolor is layered upon, we have to start with our lightest layers and then it's very important to maintain those light layers as we add more layers and continue to get darker because our last layer has to be the darkest layer and to have that beautiful contrast and depth of perception within the shell, we need those bright light layers to be shining through. So that's why when we add this light layer, it needs to be very light. We can add a little highlight and some color and depth now, and then we'll continue to add on top of those layers as everything dries and we continue with all of the shells. I really like to use a reference when I'm painting because I tend to get excited and do different shapes and things that are weird that are not realistic looking and so when I have a reference to come back to I always know I can push the boundaries of the reference as far as shape or color but I can always stay within that reference to guide me in the right direction so your shells don't have to be a perfect shape because shells are not sometimes broken or they have funny different lines but I know that when I stick within a reference, either using a picture or something right in front of me, I'm always a lot more pleased with the end result because it's a lot more realistic looking.
when I'm considering where to place the highly pigmented areas, I just really want it to be more random and less thought out. So if I start placing it and notice that it looks too uniform, I'll add a little bit more in one spot or I'll add another little line next to it, if that makes sense. So some are in the corners, some have it more around just the edges, really thin. Some have really thick areas and really light areas. So I think the, the way to make things look more organic and natural is that it's as random looking as possible. So mostly when I do this, I try not to overthink it and I will step back and look at it and think, does this look natural or does this look too thought out? I love adding complementary colors or a color that you wouldn't expect to this light wash. So this blue here to this reddish orange is just such a fun pop to add depth and interest to your shells. You don't have to keep the same pigment just highly concentrated as your more shadow contrast color. You can add yellow into the blue, you can add purple into the tans, anything you want to do to add interest and change things up. For this shell, when I added the contrasting color, I copied some of the shapes of the shell so that this will dry really nicely blended, but also have some of that structure already built in. For this shell, I took inspiration from one of the shells on my desk that is kind of broken. So it's not a real shell shape, but it's just a really light golden type shell that had 
a piece missing. So just don't be afraid to not follow the structure of normal shells and include some shells that are broken because lots of shells that you find along the beach are broken. So I wanted to kind of represent that look within this shell. The shells that I'm using for inspiration are ones that we found while on vacation in June to California, and they have these beautiful uh, patterns in them in the ones that my kids call butterfly shells because when you find them, they're still kind of attached and they look like butterflies. And so that's why there's so many of these half butterfly shells, as we call them. And so I included a lot of those in this design because my kids love those shells. So depending on where you're from or what shells you have or what shells inspire you, your shells and your pattern of shells will look completely different.
Now we are finished with all of our shells first base layer and we can move on to what I call the texture layer. For this textured layer, you're going to pick up a medium wash of pigment and you're going to use a wet on dry technique that I love to do to create texture where you're holding your brush at an angle to the paper and kind of doing this really light side swipe so that some of the roughness of your paper picks up the paint and some of the paper doesn't, leaving this beautiful um, granulated textured surface. I'm focusing the majority of the texture in the darkened areas. I really want to make sure to maintain the highlight and it's really just an accentuation of what we have going on. So the bottom layer plus the colors of contrast that have blended in plus the layers of texture and then the detail we're going to add on top of that all just will continue to add together to make a really beautiful effect. So keep your textured layer minimal. You can have fun with different contrasting colors, a totally different color on top. You can do two different colors. You can put a little bit in a corner. You can do one whole side. You can do a lot of different things. The main point to this layer is to just create depth and like there is a roughness or a texture to the shells. And again, we're avoiding that highlight so it looks more shiny and less textured when we're completely finished with the shells. Also make sure that you're following the curvature of the shell when you're placing in these strokes. You don't want to do horizontal or vertical lines unless that is in your shell structure. So most of my shells have curved lines and a lot of these are more 3D where that highlight is coming out is quite a bit taller in some spots and so I'm trying to create the imagery, create the illusion of the curvature of these shells in these strokes. You'll notice in some of the shells, I'm only doing one or two really light stripes. A little bit goes a long way with this texture, especially if you're doing a dark color. You don't want it to be overwhelming to the point where now your artwork just looks really grainy. Keeping it simple and light and only in a few spots adds enough detail and enough illusion, enough texture that it's pleasing to the eye. You don't need to overdo it. I am going to be switching from the round brush to a rigger brush for the detail, but you can totally use a round brush for this or whatever brush you have. I'm using a rigger because it has less ability to hold water, and so it's a lot more pigmented. The, the paint that I pick up is a lot more pigmented naturally, and it gives a rougher feel, which is what I want for the detail specifically for these shells in this whole look that I'm trying to achieve. So this is the third and final layer, and I think this is the layer that a lot of people get um, held up on because when we are doing detail, we either do detail in an abstract form where we are creating an illusion of detail, or we need to do detail to the point of realism. And I think there are some places we can land in between that. But I am not a realistic painter in the sense of I'm not painting every detail. I don't necessarily want it to look real. I want to do more of an illusion of realness. So creating that illusion can be quite difficult when you're painting in 
what I call loose detail because sometimes you can tend to over detail something and then you lose that illusion and it doesn't look realistic. So my biggest tip when you're painting this loose detail is do some of the details. So you're not going to focus on all of the, the details. You're going to focus on the main details and I like to concentrate on the details in one area. So in some of the areas where there's a grid pattern on the shell, I will focus on the grid pattern being really prominent and showing on one side of the shell and then it kind of blends in and disappears especially towards the highlight of the shell. So that gives the illusion that there is a pattern and a texture to the shell, but it's just more of this loose idea of a pattern and your eye is finishing the rest. It just makes it a lot more appealing to the eye if you're not going to go all the way and do a hyper realistic painting. In this detail layer stage, this is where I'm really focusing on my reference shells. So I'm looking at how do the colors blend together, which colors look the best together on some of these shells, how are some of the details laying down next to each other, those kinds of things. We don't want really a whole lot of solid colors with these shells. That's why I like using the rigger brush because it gives that more rough texture because it's not picking up as much water. And I don't want it to be a solid color also because it really just makes the shells look rigid and rough and having that natural texture that they have. For this shell, I was really inspired by the rough brown aged look of one of these shells on the on the outside of the ridges and so I did add some brown in with the blue and I picked up some water to soften the brown and really have everything blend together. I think another way to make this look really good in this style is having hard edges and also having edges that are blended together and edges that are softer blended with just water. So having a mixture of those hard lines and soft lines, having more speckled features and really soft blended together features, all of that will really help in the overall illusion that we're trying to portray. And again, don't forget that less is more, especially with this illusion type style. Sometimes when I feel like I'm not sure where to go or I'm not sure if I've done enough, I will stop what I'm doing and move on to a totally different shell. And after I've done another shell or another couple of shells or even at the end, you can sit back and look and think, is that shell still missing something or am I glad that I stopped? And I will say 95% of the time I am glad that I stopped because it's so easy to overwork this layer. And I don't want it to be overworked because that's just the worst feeling, especially in the collage of shells like this, where one shell being overworked, you just hate that one shell and all of the other ones you're proud of. So anyway, if you're worried about it being overworked, step back, take a break from it, go work on another shell, you can always come back. I think this was my favorite shell pattern to paint. I thought it was super fun and I loved the way the whole illusion and look of it came out. The trick of it is to really mimic that uneven line shape but still follow the curvature of the shell. So just doing different shapes and lengths of line and and having some that are combined more together and some that are on their own and really just mimicking how the shell looked in real life.
This purple one is a good example of maintaining the highlight but also creating the curvature with these lines. You can go within the highlight also with the lines, but keeping it really light and almost non-existent in the highlight really adds to that effect where you can see the curvature of that shell and you can see where the light is bouncing off it. So on this shell, you can see that the bristles are a little bit splayed out and I just used my fingers to press them apart a bit while they had paint on them and then took that paint straight to the shell to create a more even look when I created the lines. So I really liked that hatched texture that it created. Again, I loved this design and one of the shells on my desk had more of a reddish undertone and then a really dark blue design in this squiggly pattern that's like a line that's uneven. Anyway, I loved the colors. I felt like they were really unexpected together and this ended up being my favorite shell, I think, of the entire group and I, again, feel like if you just really baby that highlight you will love how it turns out for this one i kept it really simple it was inspired by a broken opalescent type shell that was on my desk and so i just mostly focused on the overall features of highlights and shadow and kept it really simple with the textures and detail You can see that I'm using really, really light pressure and it's almost like I'm drawing and sketching these patterns onto the shells because they have a jagged, ragged look. It's not like a drop, like a smooth, wet line of watercolor that you would normally put down. I really wanted them to look because it's kind of how they look on the shells and I wanted to create that illusion within the designs as well.
For this next shell, you can see I took a peek at the other side of the shell because I really wanted to get a feel for the really dark, really rigid side of this seashell. And I went very full in, very dark, very heavy with my lines instead of light like with the other shells. And that's just because this shell on that other side um, I should have flipped it over for the dang video. <laughs> I don't know why I flipped it back over. But anyway, it was really dark. It was um, very intensely colored. And so I wanted to bring more of that dark color in, but then also have the edges of the darkness be that sketchy, rough feel that we've had throughout this whole thing. I also used it as a way to create a lot of movement and curvature in the shell by adding those really deep, dark ridges. And I think the shell kind of created itself, kind of made this interesting shape that I wasn't even expecting. And I really like how it turned out. I think once you put it, if you, if you do something like this on a shell, um, going in and adding those kind of mid-tone layers and then the sketchy layers and then you'll see I'm going in also and adding even darker contrasting layers kind of in between where some of those lines are because we still want to maintain some of our mid-tone and lighter areas but we do want to highlight that that's a really dark shell and it has a lot of character and a lot of curvature and so you can don't be afraid to add as much color or darkness as you need to while also maintaining some of that sketchy edge will help with uh, the whole feeling of it still being rough and ragged.
So honestly, for this one, you're going to see me struggle. It was not my favorite one. And that's okay. I didn't... I don't... It's like how I explained earlier how if you overwork it or if you have too much water, it's just not going to give you the effect that you're looking for. And when I'm doing this purple right here, about halfway down the shell, I'm realizing, dang it, there is way too much water. I just completely start overworking it, trying to fix it, and it's just kind of a mess. I think I save it in the end. Well, you let me know. It's just one of those ones where you're like, I wish I could redo that. Dang it. <laughs> Especially in a collage, like I said before, where all of the other ones look so good. And then this little, this little booger of a shell. Anyway, it all works out in the end. And it's on the end. It's on the corner. No one, no one notices it anyway, right? And after this one, I keep the last one very simple, but this is how I paint my seashells in this loose but detailed style. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and that it was helpful for you. If you try this one out, please give me a tag on Instagram. I would love to see it, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.